Hi, my name is Karina Seiss and I'm a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator at Vivere. I'm here with VHN's very own nutrition care expert and registered dietitian, Neva Cochran, who is here to talk to us about childhood obesity and what you can do to support your child's health. Welcome, Neva. Thanks, Karina. Now, we've heard about um, childhood obesity and the rising rates. What does this mean for our country? Well, as children are becoming more and more overweight and obese, we're actually seeing the diseases of adulthood in children, things like uh, type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol and blood pressure, gallbladder disease, and even joint problems. So if these aren't addressed early on, they're going to carry them over into adulthood, and it's just going to cause more serious problems with their health down the line. Well, yeah, when you put it that way, we can see how important it is to encourage healthy behaviors with our children. Um, but how do we know if they're overweight? Well, children go through growth spurts throughout childhood and adolescence, but if a parent is really worried about whether their child is overweight or not, they should check with a pediatrician or a registered dietitian, and they can plot their height and weight on a right. growth chart, and that'll tell them whether they're outside the normal range or not. Okay, yeah, great point. Mm -hmm. um, so if a child is overweight, that's such a sensitive subject, mm -hmm. you know, how do we go about addressing that with a child without hurting anybody's feelings? Rather than regimenting children into strict diets and exercise programs, it's more important to just make small changes like encouraging them to have fruit for snacks or to just get outside and be a little more active like walking the dog or playing catch in the backyard. Oh, that's good. So what are some examples that parents can do right now? First and foremost, parents need to set a good example because especially for smaller children, they're the primary role models that they have. Yeah, they really are. Yeah, and then there is the new My Plate uh, food guide that the right. USDA has, and it can help parents to, to know what kinds of foods to put on the plate that'll really make a balanced, nutrient-rich diet. And finally, get kids more involved in the whole process. If they have some kind of ownership, then they're more likely to, to eat it and eat nutritiously. So have your kids sit down with you and plan menus. Take them with you to the supermarket and ask them to go to the produce section and pick out some fruits and vegetables that they would like to eat. Um, have them go down the cereal aisle and pick out their own breakfast cereal. Well, now hold on a second. So what about <laughs> breakfast cereal? Because I've always seen, you know, kids, they love that sugary cereal. You know, is, is that going to be okay? Is that an option? It's kind of a trade-off. You uh, let them have the sugar-sweetened cereal, mm -hmm. but then you also mix it with one that's low sugar right. and uh, Oh, and then you have the fiber. balance of both of them. Yeah, and then I especially like when you idea. combine this mm -hmm. with some low-fat milk and some fruit like banana or raisins, it really makes a nutritionally balanced uh, breakfast. Yeah, so you just want to involve everybody. So I see that you've brought um, some examples of healthy eating. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Um, one of the things that we're trying to uh, get more people to eat are fruits and vegetables. Right. So with children, make them attractive and make them fun. For snacks, you can have you know pieces of fresh fruit dipped in some vanilla low-fat yogurt, or some you know small pieces of vegetables that kids are e easily able to pick up and dip them in some low-fat ranch dip. Right, they have little finger foods. They like exactly. that. Exactly. Another thing that's important is to encourage children to eat breakfast. Breakfast is a meal that's more frequently skipped, and kids that eat breakfast tend to perform better in school, get sick less, and have mm -hmm. fewer absences. So it's very important to eat breakfast. But sometimes parents are really pressed for time in the morning. Right. So I have some ideas ideas here for some grab-and-go breakfast that you could even take in the car if necessary. First, this one is a hard-boiled egg on a stick. It's important to have protein at right. breakfast, and this is a great easy way to do it. Pair that with a parfait that's made mm -hmm. with fruit, low-fat yogurt, and a whole grain cereal. Another example is how about a peanut butter and mm -hmm. banana sandwich on a waffle. Just take a frozen waffle, oh, toast it, cut I it see. in half, layer it with peanut butter and banana. Put it together. And you, you can your, grab it, yeah, take it in the car, great. along with a glass of milk with a straw. You got a healthy breakfast. Right, and so, and I can see that everything's kind of smaller portions, you know, for kids. That's important. Absolutely. Sometimes it's not the food that you're eating, but it's the amount. Oh, so be okay. careful about portions. Um, one of the tools that we can use for gauging portions of meat is a deck of cards. It's about two to three ounces of a cooked meat, and that's an appropriate portion. Thank you, Neva, for being here and talking to us about nutrition and your tips. We really appreciate it. It's been great to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Next, we're going to talk about fitness and exercise for the entire family, giving you some tips that both you and your children can